In addition to figuring out how DNA is actually structured, Watson and Crick actually suggested how DNA copies itself. And there was some contention about how that actually happens after they came up with the idea of how DNA is structured as a double helix. Some people thought that a new copy of DNA is made out of the old copy. In other words, that the DNA is conservatively copied, that the new copy is basically 100% new material, that the old copy remains the way it is, just like it is. Now, there are some problems with that, and most of it would be that the old, old, old copies would be old, old, old materials. And so after a while, this would be, lead to problems on those old copies, you know. And the new copies would make, have more mistakes because there's not going to be a way to figure it out if there's a mistake in the copy process. Maybe the proofreading enzymes, the way they can tell that there was a problem in the copy process is because they compare one strand to the other to make sure that a T is paired with an A. But if you have two strands which are new and you made a mistake uh, and you put an A and a T, but that's actually supposed to be something completely different, you will never know because you don't have the original strand attached to it. And so that would be a problem for life, which is why life does not copy the DNA like that. Instead, like we talked about, it unzips the DNA and does it semi-conservatively, which means each of the new copies are basically a, a half old, half new. Another idea was that it was a little more dispersed copy than that. But uh, they then needed to find out how to prove that this was actually done like that. And there was a, another group of scientists called Menzenstahl and Stahl, Stahl that actually figured it out to an experiment. They figured out that DNA is not copied conservatively. In other words, the original strand does not uh, make a new synthesized strand from scratch, but it's actually a semi-conservative, but each, each strand has half old, half new. And to discover this, a group of scientists did basically this. First, they discovered that if they tagged the DNA with a special material, they could make it lighter. If basically, if they used nitrogen-15, to grow the DNA at first and then switched to the nitrogen 14, the material will be slightly lighter because it has different elements inside. And so that means that if I got this DNA and I put it in the same container as, as that DNA, the lighter DNA will, will be on top because it's less dense. Okay? So you could use this to separate the DNA strands. In other words, if the DNA strands were both made of the old type of material, which was heavier, uh, they would sink to the bottom because it's very, they're denser. If they were half old, half new, they would stick somewhere around the middle of density. But if both, both strands were new, they would be somewhere near the top. And that was a good idea to figure out whether or not the, DNA, the new DNA was basically like that. So they let the cells uh, make DNA out of heavier nitrogen, and then they switch to new nitrogen and see what happens to the copies as the DNA is being copied itself. And they centrifuge the copies and see the layers based on density. So remember, the whole process is based on using two different types of nitrogen, a heavy nitrogen and a light nitrogen. And, and notice what they notice happening over time. You start it with 100% old heavy hydrogen, and as you go through the process, you can, you're going to make more and more of the new hydrogen and less and less of the old ni nitrogen, so which means that the copies are constantly being replaced with new material. And the proportion of what's old and what's new is what's interesting. And that's kind of how they figure it out. Now, to make sense out of these results that they, they found, uh, it, basically, this is what's happening, okay? That at first, you have just the original strands with the old heavy material. But after one generation, okay, the material is going to be lighter because half the material is going to be made of old and half is going to be made of new because basically what's going to happen to the old here is it's going to be split right and so at this point here each of those splits is going to be completed by a, another half that's made of the lighter old material and so now you have the dna that's half old half new and it's somewhere in the ha me middle but then each one of these will also split again and so you have that which splits more and then again you're gonna have this which splits more and then each of the splits is completed with new DNA because that's all you have left so new DNA new DNA and then as you can see now you have this much in new and then half of the other two are also new and so at this point 75 percent of the total is new and only 25 percent of the total is old and so that's why you see more layers as you can see on the second generation 
And if you keep going many, many generations, you eventually find out that after many generations, the DNA material is constantly uh, replaced with new material, and that prevents old information from being there. And at the same time, you also make sure that you um, have a template to compare to make sure your copy was accurate. And this is genius way that life found to maintain its structure. And so now we know that it's a semi-conservative model is how it works. DNA unzips itself and each half is completed with new DNA material, which makes sure that at least some of the material is going to be more recent, more fresh, maintaining the integrity of the DNA code like that. And at the same time, you have a template upon which to compare to make sure that the base pairing was done accurately and that the DNA has to be the way it is to be, needs to be, which prevents mutations. All right? So that is the semi-conservative method of DNA copy.